What's it thinking, Colonel? Uh. It's afraid. It's afraid! <laughs> There's a shift happening. Companies are aware that their woke agendas aren't quite landing with the general public anymore, and activists are terrified. And enter Salon, the great publication that published this juicy little article. Salon 2015, I'm a p but not a monster. Salon, meet pet who mean well. Now, as we all know, these people are the, the people on the right side of history. They are the people on the right. They have the moral high ground. <sighs> they release this. Let's all stop ignoring the fandom menace. It's real and it's winning. <laughs> Attacks from the toxic side of Marvel and Star Wars fandom are feature, not a bug. They serve a darker side. Ooh, dramatic setup. Let's go further. <laughs> Once you get your bingo cards out, because this one is going to more than likely include the typical article references that these have. Gamergate, Comicsgate, online harassment that didn't happen, an actor that left social media because of the fans that didn't happen. Instead of going through this whole article step by step and debunking every single one of them, that's what they want you to do. They want you to, uh, to label everybody that is even adjacent to this as, uh, you know, oh, neo-Nazis and whatnot, and they want to put you on your defense. Well, fuck that. I'm not doing that. Instead, I'm going to break down what this article is for and how the left publications like Salon and the Huffington Post and all these garbage tier websites, how they build this narrative. Uh, I'll just, well, we're going to go through that. So how they build these boogeyman stories is they're going to start with a couple of unsubstantiated stories about harassment or racism that have maybe two screenshots from a DM that have nothing connecting those acts with the group that they're trying to demonize at the moment. Specifically, articles like this don't ever actually go in to the situations. They don't ever explain what happened or any references to that. They just say, you know that time that racism happened. Obi-Wan Kenobi star Moses Ingram was their most recent target and her harassment and Disney's response, including a video post from Ewan McGregor that defended her was widely reported, which is a funny little phrase they throw in there whenever they're like, it was, it was a big deal. Trust me, it was a big deal. Everybody talked about it. Not long before Ingram made her Obi-Wan debut as Inquisitor Reva, bigots called on the newcomer Leia Jeffries when Disney announced she'd be cast as the new Annabeth Chase in the upcoming Disney Plus adaptation of Percy Jackson and the Olympians. Now that we set up the stories, let's connect them all with the Boogeyman. All of this is either directly or tangentially a decentralized web referred to as the Fandom Menace. A group of extremely online comic book and Star Wars zealots that coalesced around a shared dislike for Ryan Johnson's Lucasfilm sequel, Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi. They failed to mention in this article that the, most of the people that originally used the hashtag Fandom Menace don't even use that hashtag anymore. You're getting, you're pretty late to the party. Using old terms like Fandom Menace two years past their prime is like saying old slang. That's cray cray. Some of the trolls claim allegiance to that label. Others merely qualify for membership. Even those who don't consider themselves a part of it or decry their disturbing attack patterns may contribute to their success without meaning to do so. Oh, so you're gonna build up a label. Let's call it evil group. You're gonna say, these evil acts were done by this evil group and anybody that I don't agree with is connected to that evil group through unsubstantiated stories that I will go into further in this article. Regardless of how they identify, each is a cancer cell and a large, amorphous hate blob descending from Gamergate. Write that off on your bingo list, we got one. Infecting the fandoms of the most ubiquitous entertainment franchises in the world, mainly Marvel, Star Wars, and other Disney titles. I want you to put that little line there, mainly Marvel, Star Wars, and other Disney titles. I, wanna, I want you to take that, put that in your memory bank, because I'm gonna come back to it later. The attacks on Ingram and Jeffries before her and the campaign devoted to downplaying their severity in the wake of them requires us to at least begin to grapple with where these campaigns begin and how each in their way may contribute to the larger political efforts to mainstream white supremacy and radicalize the disaffected. 
bing i got another bingo one it was white supremacy there it is now that we have our boogeyman his actions and a group of people to pin it on but have no actual receipts to prove this surely the next paragraph is going to be all about substantiating their arguments right right wrong so after going on a long diatribe about a joke Facebook page that really kind of has nothing to do with the main subject of this article, they move on to review bombing. Oh my God, it's the worst thing that could ever happen. Review bombing. Laughing off pages like this, the Facebook page. Review bombing, less so. Can't laugh that off because it's very serial. This is another uh recurring strategy on database driven movie and TV sites that posting aggregate scores of user ratings did that make sense to you i know i read it but it doesn't make sense the tactics goal is to create the illusion that a show or tv series pretty redundant there is a creative bomb by intentionally depressing their audience ratings with a barrage of one star reviews or their equivalent these ratings are easy to game on sites lacking specific measures to curb abuses which is what Rotten Tomatoes did in 2019 following a coordinated bombing of its audience rating for Captain Marvel. I want you to pay attention to how they set up review bombing and how bad it is. And then to think about the actual issue that they try and put forth and make look scarier than it really is. IMDb ratings remain stunningly simple to manipulate, it seems. On June 9th, Miss Marvel was polling at a 6.6 .6 out of 10, thanks to 22.2% of the site's reviewers giving the series one star. This dragged down the 39.5, giving it 10 stars. Now this is pretty funny. A fair share of which was probably contributed by users attempting to restore balance to the scale. So reverse review bombing, you could say? It didn't work in the long run. Today, Miss Marvel has a 6.1 user rating score, with the percentage of one-star votes having risen to 27.2. A person can simply claim that a lot of people don't like the series, but if that were so, the RT audience ratings would resemble IMDb's. It doesn't by a significant margin. Now, let's not talk about the fact that they're two different platforms that have two different number of users that go to their site and how that can vary. Let's not talk about that. So th we're supposed to be afraid of uh, Miss Marvel getting a 6.6 .6 rating. That's review bombing, guys. That's, uh, oh my gosh, a percentage of the audience that watched the show that seemed to not like it. Nobody was talking about it. Nobody was talking about it whatsoever. So I don't, th this is not some weird coordinated attack. A 6.6 .6 rating is a normal rating. On the surface, these two examples likely rate as annoying ploys to gain attention or take swipes at a giant media conglomerate that ultimately doesn't factor juvenile backlash into its decision-making process. Well, I don't know, you're talking about Disney, they do that all the time. But they also serve as a distraction from the more dangerous problem posed by a handful of YouTube influencers such as <gasps> Geeks and Gamers or The Quartering. So we have the boogeyman, we have the group, now we have individuals that we can attack. So out of evil group, they pluck out a couple people so they can focus on them. So they've decided to target the quartering and my good friends, Ryan Kennel and Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna take a couple of creators that don't align specifically with their worldview, with Salon's morally right worldview, they're gonna take these creators and they're going to connect them to racism and misogyny and stories like that with no actual connections. Simply by them being mentioned in this article means that they did those things that were listed earlier in the article. They're connected to this group that I am going to label evil group. They're connected to them. But we're not actually going to substantiate that. Letting you, the reader, assume that they're racist, that they're sexist, that they're a part of this evil group. Even admitting this, none of them make specific calls for harassment or violence against the targets. Importantly, they and others go out of their way to insist that none of their vitriol comes from a racist place and condemn violence. But such disclaimers tend to be adjacent to gaslighting or misinformation. <clears throat> like this article right now, again, with no receipts. They attempt to have receipts, but again, they all feel kind of uh, vague, kind of uh, ethereal. 
unconnecting it to an actual person that they just listed, but it's definitely one of them, right? Another reframes, another, just quotations, another, another reframes the statement the official Star Wars Twitter account posted in support of Ingram as being directed at anyone who doesn't like this series. Much like this article is doing right now, they attempt to paint Ryan Kennel as a racist, which uh, we all know, look, he's a, he's a savage racist. <laughs> That's a running joke because Ryan isn't actually racist. It's just people like you call him racist because of stupid things, but he's not really. So that's kind of like, that's why we all uh, say stuff like that. That's why I got to clue you in on that. We know Reva got a lot of backlash for her acting, her spot in the story, her importance for everything she knew, for the continuity, a lot of different things. Canel spews. Now, if you just take what he just said, that is literally why countless people have had grievances with Reva are all those things he just listed. Lucasfilm wants to paint everyone that doesn't like the character as a racist because they continue to attack fans. Like this article is doing right now. Now that they've got the evil group, they've picked a few people out of it. It's time to scaremonger. <laughs> Griping about wokeness ruining Star Wars and the MCU is big business. And in case you haven't been paying attention, Business is good. And monetizing the outrage of the disillusioned is lucrative. If you consider that a YouTube personality can make around $18 per 1,000 ad views, equating to $3 to $5 per 1,000 video views, you begin to understand why a few of these men, and mainly it's men, make it their job to pump out multiple videos a day. There you go, Ryan, you toxic male. Stop working so damn hard because these concepts have been mainstreamed. What are complaints about race bending roles or casting for a diversity, if not a weaker version of the so-called great replacement theory? Or it could be nerds that love a story and don't want it to be changed. Could it possibly be that? Maybe, but let's not mention that fact. Let, there's a spider on my camera, oh my God. Fucking spider just attacked me. I fucking forgot what I was gonna say. What? Spider on the camera! What was I saying? <laughs> I don't remember. During this spider break, why don't you mosey on down to the merch shop where you could have this skull shirt or this special edition colorized skull shirt. Ooh, or a hoodie. You could have one of those. It might get cold eventually. Link in the description downstairs. Ultimately, that's what this whole thing is about. This whole article is about the fear that they are losing because their arguments do not hold up. These people that they are trying to label as racist or misogynistic or sexist or whatever it is, these people are by large regular people that just don't agree with the agenda that is being put into their fandoms. That is it. It's not racism. And I'm not going to go into the countless examples of characters that are black, that are women, that people love. I'm not going to go into that because they're not even going to reference that in the, in the article. They only give you information from their point of view, and that is all that matters to them. Let's disregard the fact that this very article right here is proving every one of those statements that they tried to label as scary and dangerous and racist. That is proving Ryan Kennel's point right there with this article you're painting him as a racist for not liking the disney product that you put forth and as a side note i'd like to go back to that quote i talked about before mainly marvel star wars and other disney titles that's very interesting that this article would focus heavily very very heavily on disney products like star wars and marvel and turning red barely a mention for any other products from any other companies very specifically disney that's interesting also they reference rewriting ripley the article more of a manifesto really from a strange person that claimed all of these same things and that article was co-signed by disney staff i don't know i'm just asking questions salon and i'm not gonna substantiate them so that was the article i find these articles very like repetitive it's almost like they have a template and they just kind of put it in it's building up a straw man with no substantiating evidence whatsoever just to get the reader to be afraid of group that I want you to be afraid of. All it means is that we are winning. They are afraid. 
<laughs> and it's pretty great, isn't it? Comment below with who you think the salon writers are thinking about right now. Is it Jeremy at the quartering? Is it Ryan Kennel? Is it Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers? Is it Gary from Nerdrotic? Who, who is it right now that they're thinking about in their lounge chair while they pull down their pants and they get the lube ready and they get all like subscribe to the channel and thank you to the channel members and i'll see you when i see you good god i love you channel members look how beautiful you chads are it's the chad part of the show well the, the video where I talk about you, the Chads, Casey, Chad, Fit Dead Chris, Chad, Whitefall, Chad, Muhammad Said, Chad, I Am Groot, Chad, Mikey Fargo, Chad, Arcasol, Chad, Zhang the Great, Chad, Russell Guy, Chad, you guys are freaking Dean H, you Chad, Late Art, we already know this, you a Chad, I love you. All you big rods, you beautiful man, you stay Chad.